Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here, um, upon request, I uh, had a request for doing clutches. So, I'm going to explain to you uh, from start to finish and how to do it, but i got to do a little disclaimer, I'm not actually installing these clutches. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a clutch system. Um, these are brand new, um, never been touched, but I don't have a bike to put them in at the moment. So I'm going to show you how to do them without actually installing them or supplement them, but I'll show you how to do, how I'm doing all that. All right, so I'm using uh, two donor bikes. Uh, I'm doing this one right here up on the stand so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, and then I have also this bike right here. This is my 1999 Kawasaki KE100 parts bike. Um, I'm gonna use as also. So I have a couple bikes, a couple, this one's way down bottom, and I got the one up top here that I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna actually, this is the motor that's actually coming apart. This is a parts engine. So I'm gonna take this one apart. This one does not need a clutch, but this one, I don't care what happens. So it's just a parts motor. So anyway, without further ado, let's get situated and set up here. All right, so first things first, when you get your clutch kit, this is a, um, a gallon of water. Um, I cleaned it out. You can use a milk jug. You can use a drain bucket. You can use whatever you want for a bucket. These are virgin clutches, never seen oil. It, the spike takes a wet clutch system. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to cut the, cut the bottle in half. Take your clutches. Put them in there. However you want to set them up. I, I do it so more, more, uh, the most material is exposed. I take the same engine oil that I'm going to be putting in my motor. Okay. And I dump it up inside here. What you are doing by filling this up with oil, you don't have to fill it up with oil, just, just get it so they're all under oil, all in oil. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm impregnating these with oil because this is a wet clutch system. If I put these in like this, I'm going to burn up my clutch. So you want to impregnate them with oil. And how you do so is let them sit for 24 hours in the motor oil that you decide you're going to use on your bike. If you're going to use synthetic, put them in synthetic. If you're going to use conventional, use conventional. Um, whatever you decide to use, that's what you're going to put in here. Okay? I'm using, there's all kinds of clutches out there. This one just happened to be a factory spec. It is a performance clutch kit. It is actually a very nice kit. Um, it is cheap. It is not like the Barnett's. The Barnett's are the best clutch in my opinion. Um, but this one is just a generic clutch system. It actually happens to be a very decent clutch. And um, this is my third time using this clutch. And it is a very good clutch. Um, never had any issues with it. So, that's what we're gonna do for right there. So that's how you do, you get that set up. Before you do anything, before you take apart your bike, you're gonna let your thing soak. All right, now we're at the bike. This is the motor right here we're gonna be doing, but we're gonna be talking about your bike. Okay. I want to show you guys something very, very, very important, okay? It's very important. If I go to take apart this bike, see all this dirt? This dirt is going to get into my motor. Before you take apart your bike, give it a bath. Pressure wash it. Make sure she's nice and clean. I mean, you don't want no, no uh, debris in there at all, okay? You want to make sure this bike is nice and clean. That there's no obstructions, there's no dirt or debris. Okay, there is nothing. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, nice and clean. I can't stress that enough. I'm even going to say it again nice and clean because you don't want the dirt from your engine going into your engine because that's what takes out engines dirt. Engines don't like dirt, they're pretty and they like to stay that way. All right, so the next step. Okay, on your bike that you're going to do for preparation work. Okay, is you're going to take an oil bucket, a drain bucket. You could even use the one, um, not the same one you're going to use on your clutches, but one like it. If you don't have a drain bucket, you need a drain bucket. Okay, you're going to put this under your bike, right about so. Straight up from here is a 17 millimeter nut, okay, or a bolt. That is your drain plug for your crankcase oil. So what you're gonna do, or not crankcase, transmission oil, sorry. Take your plug off the top here so it can have, so it can drain easy. 
and then you're gonna go underneath. I'm gonna tip this motor right here over. So I'll show it to you what it looks like. Let me situate here. I'm gonna put you down for a quick second so I can hook this up. Okay, see that nut? You're at the very bottom of the motor. Right there. The head of that bolt is 17 millimeter. That's your drain plug. Okay, you're gonna drain all the oil out into a bucket like that. Okay, I don't think you see that not. Am I too far ahead? Get right there into that bucket. Okay, you're gonna drain it right into a bucket. All right, so let's recap. You got your clutches soaking right now in the motor oil that you're gonna use in here. Okay, you got your engine all washed up. It looks sharp. You you don't want to take it apart. That's how pretty it looks, okay? Then the next step we're gonna do is simple. We start the disassembly process. So you're gonna get yourself a clean surface to work on. Um, you're gonna put a rag down or whatever, however you wanna do it. And I'm gonna teach you guys, um, I'm gonna teach you guys a little something, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna be taking apart the side cover. These, these right here are two mismatched covers. They don't go to this, but I'm going to teach you how to do it. Okay? I'm going to give you guys a simple trick that's going to save your butt. First, use your cell phone. Take a picture of the engine. Take a picture of how it is. These bolts are different lengths. Okay? And it is imperative that the different lengths go back into where they came from. Well, how the hell are you going to remember where they came from? Because you're going to stick everything in a box, right? Wrong. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your cover off. This is held on with three screws. One, two, and three down bottom here. Okay? See right there. You're going to take a pizza box. Okay? This I'm using. I'm going to show you what I'm using. Because this stuff is yummy, super delicious. I am using a DiGiorno stuffed crust pizza box. I'll stop you in the crust. Anyway. Take your, uh, your pizza box. You rip it in half. This is called recycling. Take your cover, take it like that. Boom, see what I just did? I traced out my cover. I don't know if you can see that on the light. I put the screws where they came out of. So now when you hold it up like this, you can see the different lengths. Yep, there you go. Now you know exactly where they go and how to get there. Okay, and you can do that with all your covers. You're gonna have three covers. So you're going to have the big case, and you're going to have the two front side covers there. So that's a little helpful tip for you. All right, the next, now you get your two covers off. Show you this. Now you get your two covers off. What's the next step? Next step is removing your, your Kickstarter. Your Kickstarter is held on with one bolt right here, and then this slides right off your shaft. Okay, so what you're going to be looking at is this okay this is what you're gonna be looking at you're gonna have your oil hose coming from your oil tank show you what I did I got my oil hose I have another screw this does not go to the motor but I took a uh, another screw and I, I blocked it off you can put it up anywhere you want it's gonna leak a little bit so keep that in mind but um, what do you call it it's very windy out right now Okay, and I took that off my oil pump. Okay, so that's all set. The oil pump is disconnected. Next step is the rubber boot. Right here. It's a spring load. Just take a screwdriver underneath of it and pop it up. And slide it as far up the cable as you can. You have two cables. You have your throttle cable and your um, oiler cable. Which goes through here. Okay. To get the oil cable out, you're going to take a flathead screwdriver. You're going to gently pry on this little tab. I don't think you see that tab or not. See that little tab? You're going to gently pry on that tab right there. Not enough to snap it off, just enough to open it up a little bit. Go right back on that again. Right here's the tab. And then so the cable's loose, you can take the cable and pop it out. And then undo it from up top here and then slide it through. And it will look like this when you slide it and pull like that, and that's your cable, that's the one for that. Your throttle cable is a little different story. 
going to show you a nice neat way of doing that. To get your throttle cable off, this big nut up top here, you're going to need a pair of pliers, loosen it up. Like that. Slide the whole shaft out. Now, that needle is very critical. You don't want to bend it, you don't want to hurt it, you don't want to do anything with it. I keep a packing peanut to put on the end of it. Now this is going to be hanging from the cable. Okay, when you go and do this, this is going to be hanging from the cable. So it's going to be hanging, it's going to be hanging up here someplace, okay? You don't want that to just be tie it up, put it over by the exhaust, just so it's out of the way completely so it does not get damaged in any way, shape, or form. Put a baggie over it with a zip tie, whatever you have to do to keep that slide clean and away from any harm. It is imperative that that needle does not get bent because this thing will not run right afterwards. Okay, so now that you got that done and that's protected, you're also going to have, we will have to explain this to you, this is your choke lever right here. You're going to have a little caught pin. You're going to want to pop that button off. You need to do that before you remove that rubber boot because it comes through it. Otherwise, you won't be able to get that off. So make sure you take off that little choke uh, choke knob. Right, I got stuff blowing around everywhere up here. This is windy as you know what. And the other thing, too, you want to do this where it's uh, not windy outside because uh, it, it could be bad. All right. So then, on the front of your motor, you're going to have this plug. See that plug right there? You're going to pop that plug off. Sometimes they come out good. Oh, this one does. I use my thumbnail. Pop that plug off. Do not lose this plug. This plug is very imperative that you keep that plug because dirt and water and mo all kinds of crap will get in there. And then it'll go right into the carburetor and then you'll be running like crap. Now, all this extra stuff right here, these extra little parts and stuff like that, I stress, use your cell phone, take a picture of it. This is, take a picture, snap it, cheese. That's where it goes. And then you can take it and you can stick it in a Ziploc baggie, which comes in handy. I use baggies all the time for my stuff. And you can write on them. I got the writable ones right there. You can just mark on where they are. And um, that comes in handy for you. Okay? Then, Take your screwdriver, you go through the hole into the carburetor. Loosen up the mounting screw to it, and then you just take it off. Wiggle it off. Wiggle it off. Once you get the carburetor off, okay. Then you pop your carburetor off and you put that off to the side. You want to make sure you got that nice and clean. These right here will fit into a baggie. You can fit them into a baggie and make sure your rubber piece comes off the bottom as well. Okay, so now we're here at this point. You got your oil line. You already taken that off and plugged it. Then you have your oiler. So you're gonna take your oiler off and your banjo fitting. So, you under your banjo fitting, it's gonna be an eight millimeter head um, socket. You unscrew this, pop that down, I take this off, take a picture of your banjo fitting. It's going to have two washes. I robbed one of them. I don't think you can see that or not. It's going to have two washes. It's going to have two washes on that. And then on your screws, there's going to be two screws. Hold it on. A long one on the right and a small one on the left. Long one on the right. Small one on the left. And you're gonna have two washes. Um, some are copper, some are neoprene uh, washes. It depends on what, you know, what year making model you have. And then I put the washes you put them back onto it. Those washers are from another oiler. I just did. You want to make sure you have them on there. It's very important to have those on there. Hold on, I gotta pause you for a second. Okay, so get the two washers out. Then you're gonna wiggle it back and forth until it comes out, until it pops off. 
Okay. Now, sometimes these oils will come apart. It's okay if they do, you can just pop them back together. What I do at this point is I put this in a baggie on its own. And then I take my two screws and I screw those back into the engine. I want to get at least three turns out of them. Three full turns. So they can't back out and uh, fall out. I do this in case I'm not ready to put the bike back together anytime soon. I'll know where they go. Okay, so I got the oiler out. Now we're going to stop and we're going to recap. Okay. First things first, the little choke cap. You got to take that off. It's held on with a cotter pin. You're going to remove your rubber boot, slide it up the cable. You're going to undo your nut that goes on the top of your um, carburetor and slide the whole piece out. And you're going to make sure it is safe and protected. Then, you're going to pop off your little rubber mount, undo your carburetor screw, and pop your carburetor out. You're also going to have a fuel line too, by the way. You're going to want to pop that fuel line off and make sure your fuel pedcock is off. Okay, so now we got the carburetors off, the oiler, we um, took the line off, we plugged the line, we took the this line off right here, which is a banjo fitting, 8 millimeter, the two screws, and popped the, um, the oiler off. We already removed the starter and the two side covers on the side right here. Okay, so that's basically that in a nutshell. The next step we're going to do is take off your, your um, cable. Okay, this is your clutch cable right here, and while you have it off, it is a good time to lubricate it. Um, so you can do all that, and before all that, you pressure washed it. All right, so I'm going to pause you, get my stand. Okay, now I got you set up on my, on my stand. I'm going to show you how to take off the clutch cable. Inside here, there's a little tab. You got to take that tab and you got to bend it out, outward. Um, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers for this. Or you can pry it off with a screwdriver. That is a lock. You don't uh, bend it back as little as possible because you're going to have to, um, what do you call it there? You, you're going to have to push back in it when you're on reassembly. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to loosen it up at the handlebars as, as on the, uh, I'll show you. This is the brake side, but it's the same as the clutch side. This uh, little screw right here for your brake cable, you're gonna loosen it up and, and put it all the way in. Give as much slack as possible on that cable. Okay, that is very important. Whatever makes it easier for you, you know what I mean? Okay, like that. Then, I put my finger on the back side here, I push forward as far as I can, use my cable, and pop it off. And now it's out. Then, this is this can be jammed in there pretty tightly sometimes. Yeah, this one's in there pretty good. And now I'm going to work it up and down, work it until I can get it out. And, uh, see if I can't make a little gap in there, use a screwdriver and pry. Just kind of work it out. Wiggle it, shake it, and there we go. Got the clutch cable out. Okay, this clutch cable is out. Alright, so now, as you can see, we have this side of the motor pretty much stripped out and down. This engine's already been drained. This is your drain screw right here for your, I mean, not drain screw, but your, your oil level screw. Alright. Using an impact driver, I uh, break all the bolts for you. This is an impact driver right here. Basically, any one of the big screws that are on this cover right here, uh, there's a couple on the inside. I'm going to show you where they're located. Okay, so the screws are going to be up here. You've already taken out a few when you took off your cover. So keep that in mind when you're wondering, like, hey, I don't see no screws for this side. You've already taken them out. Those, those long screws go all the way through the case. You have one up in here, one here, and then down bottom you have them going all the way across the bottom. 
and then back up again. There is nothing on this side over here that you have to worry about. Okay, just so you, just so you know on that. And then, what I do on the pizza box, I draw a big oval, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make one screw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, so on. And mark them, mark them all, number them. Then on your, on your motor, you're gonna use a reference, okay? So, see how you get your hole right here for the, uh, the carburetor? You're gonna say carburetor mounting hole down one inch. And then write that on the box, draw the hole on the on the box and say hole down one inch screw number one two three four that way you have a reference point so i've already went ahead and shocked all these screws loose and because it's a parts engine that's no good i really don't care in which order they come out of but for you you're going to want to write them all down because they do come in different sizes they're not all the same length If I was doing this on a bike, this engine would be spotless right now. Cleanliness on these things is very important because they're one, they're a rotary engine. Two, you want to make sure a rot rotary valve engine, not rotary engine. It's a rotary valve engine. Okay, very important, um, and to keep it nice and clean. I'm going to tip this motor up. The nice thing about these motors, you can do this on the bike. You don't have to yank your motor. So that, that helps. That helps. A lot. Look, there's your belly filter right there. You can see that, that's your belly filter under your cab. But because this engine's out, I can work on it like this. You can do the same thing too if you want to yank your motor out, but you really don't need to do that. Kind of uh, um, overkill. I'm going to stress something else too. They have a gasket that goes around this whole case. You have to buy the gasket that goes around it. Your best bet is to buy the gasket and seal kit. <clears throat> that way you have a new gasket for your oiler and, a new, and you can get the seal for your uh, kickstarter. Now would be a good time to change that kickstarter shaft. Okay. Now that I have that all apart, I'm then going to... Um, you know break the case but it's gonna be hard to break apart because the gasket's been on there for so long so I'll be right back okay I want to stress something else to you guys too out there whenever you do a clutch you're gonna to have to readjust the clutch in this video I'm not going to show you how to read how to adjust the clutch because I already have a video on how to adjust the clutch so I'm just doing a video on showing you guys how to um, take this apart to get to your clutch Okay, that's what this is for. I used a rubber mallet. Um, this is a pretty heavy duty dead blow hammer. And I whack it on the corners and as, as much as you can. And then I use a, a flathead screwdriver and I stick it in the ears. I'll show you. You're going to get a little bit of oil. And then I twist. I don't pry. I put on the, on the bolt holes and I twist it apart. And that's the best way I found to take these apart. Making sure you're being very careful not to pry on your um, kick, your Kickstarter because it's going to bind up. And there we go. This little plunger right here falls off every time. This goes on the center of your clutch. And I'm going to show you how to take care of that when, uh, what do you call it there, after the clutch is reassembled. That's how we expose to the clutch.
Okay. So I only have five minutes left on the, on filming on this video, so I'm gonna show you guys what I do. I just take these um, all these bolts out. I've already loosened them up. Um, I take all these apart. Mark them. I also wanted to show you guys this too. There is a mark right here, an arrow. Okay, you're gonna want to mark that on the. It, there's a there's a um a mark it's gonna uh, line up with. Okay, it's important that you put that you line that back up. You know, follow the arrow. This is a spring plate and it's under pressure. So if you take these all the way out, it's going to uh, come back at you. But I'll show you. Watch. I bet I take them all out except for two. I'm trying to do this so I can uh, keep my uh, what do you call it the half hour mark on the film because it's going to go into two videos if not. And I back them back out slowly because you don't want these things to come jutting out at you because they they will fly out. You will have no problem doing that. So. They're still going to be under pressure even at the last thread a little bit. Sometimes, not all the time. Depends on the springs you get. This plate right here is what keeps them engaged. Looks like we're going to be good on this one. You don't want to use air tools on this. This is aluminum and it's and these are small um we call it the non-graded bolts. So very important. And then you can see you have your six springs. Make sure you're very careful. To take these out. Check and make sure they're not um, broken, and make sure they're all at the same height if you're going to reuse them. Then up in here. is a snap ring clip. Don't know if you can see that too well. Right in here there's a snap ring clip. Okay, so what you're going to use is a pair of snap ring pliers. Like this right here, these are, I barely even use these ones. Put them right in the holes. Expand your clip and the whole clutch comes out. That's what the clip looks like. Very important, you do not lose that clip. After the clip is out, you can then remove your clutches. That's it, right there. There's a thrust washer on the back. You wanna make sure you don't lose that thrust washer. And that's your clutch basket right there and that'll come right out. Right there. When it comes apart, Make sure you mark your, um, what do you call it there, your arrow. Like I know that one came from right there in that spot. So what I'm going to use on that, I'll show you how I do that. Okay, you can use tape. You can use a Sharpie. But keep in mind, as, you, as you're touching it, you're going to get things greasy and oily so they could fall off. But tape seems to work pretty good. It sticks pretty well. And then just take your camera phone and mark, you know, as I take a picture of it. And then you're also going to want to mark the back side here where it goes. So when you get your clutch out, you're going to want to mark the backing plate. That's really what matters is, is make sure they're all uniform. And then you can take them all apart and you can see the discs. Let's look at that. Um, uh, let me shrink it back down. Hold on. Right there, these are good clutches too. These are factory clutches. Is that crazy? So, basically, you got your um, your plate, pressure plate. You got your discs, your intermediate steel plate, your disc, steel plate, disc, steel plate, disc, and then the back part of that whole plate. 
And that is how you take apart a clutch. Putting it back together is just as easy. So what you're going to do for that one. I'll show you. We're going to pretend that these are the impregnated clutches. Let me separate them all here. Okay. So now these are here the clutches that have been soaking in the oil and they're all nice impregnated. Okay. Oh, hold on, I gotta go. One second. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so basically what you got this is the back plate right here. That's your front plate right there. So what I do is I take this, I'm gonna take my disc, one disc on. Your steel disc, steel disc, steel disc. Your backing plate, check your mark, line your mark up with your arrow that's on the front there. So it's like that. Then, when that's all set, make sure your thrust, your thrust washer is on there. If you clean this and your thrust washer comes off and every time you go to put it back on there, you can't put it back on there, here's a tip for you. Take a dab of grease. Regular grease. Smear it on it. And your, your uh, washer will stick right to it. As if by magic. Then you're going to push that clutch back on there. Making me have to lie, I didn't put enough on there. Put your washer on with the grease. It would be better if you put it on there. Line up your marks with your uh, that you made. You might have to rotate it a little bit until it lines up. Make sure all your clutches slide in their grooves. Just like that. Boom. Then you're gonna take your uh, your pin, your clutch your uh, ring, clutch ring, right there. 